How's it going everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So today we're gonna go over my bug out bag 2022 upgrades. And mainly this is to get y'all maybe some ideas to put in your pack or maybe to solidify ideas that you absolutely would never put in your pack. But I've been doing this for a reasonably good amount of time and I enjoy moving on to new things, testing things out. And I want to make my bag less weight wise, but more capable. So I'm going to go through the items that I think would improve your pack if you don't already have these in, or maybe get you thinking of some ideas to put in there. So first off, mainly it is water. How do I transport water from one point to another? Now canteens are, have been used for honestly hundreds, if not thousands of years in some type. And I think and I do carry one with me. I carry a Keith Titanium um, canteen. But I think it's nice to have something that is very easily, you know, rolled up and taken care of and it can crush down very small. But then you can expand it out and then have a bunch of extra water depending where you're at. Myself, my environment, I am up in the mountains and then I continue down to the plains. So the mountains have a fairly good amount of water, especially snow melt this time of year and then all year round, you know, streams and stuff are coming off those peaks that are fairly common. So water's everywhere. But when I get down into the plains and I'm traversing to like a larger city or trying to get home, there's a large expanse of just pretty much no water unless you specifically go somewhere for it. And I need to be able to transport water. And depending where I am, if I have a ton of water, I can compress this down, not worry about it, but then also expand it out and then have extra water resources available to me. So I think this Hydro Pack, um, this is a two liter. I think this is pretty cool too. You can put an adapter on it and then actually purify your water or filter your water from this as well. Next is probably going to be a little controversial with some of you, but it is actually signaling and a smoke grenade of some type. This is an M14 smoke deployment and it is in red. So I carry two of these and they're kind of the military style of you have the spoon, you know, you pull the safety off and then you pull your pin and you throw it. So this has two particular mindsets behind it, regardless if you agree with it or not. First is going to be signaling in a situation of some sort that you want to grab the attention of somebody like say it is a search helicopter or individual searching for you because you're in an emergency situation and you're trying to broadcast your location maybe you don't have cell phone service and other stuff like that you're trying to make yourself very well saw or seen or other aspects like that to grab the attention of somebody also this kind of rolls into you know, defensive base aspects. Now, if we go down the line and talk about without rule of law and it gets really serious and the end of the world happens and people are just all out for themselves and you're trying to get home with your bag, just hypothetical, right? You can use this as a concealment to break contact from someone of trying to get to you. So you have, you know, that visual aspect that you can break away from. If you throw two of these out in a general area, it's gonna kinda build up depending on your wind environment. I get it, environment is a pain and it can hinder us sometimes, but you can make a concealment of this smoke so you can break contact and maybe go a different direction without the enemy or hostiles seeing where you're at. It gives you slightly an edge. The military uses smoke in a lot of different aspects and I've kind of used it in my military career. It has worked and I just kind of thought of it. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna put some smoke grenades in there. So these last about, I think a minute, minute and a half of just producing smoke, kind of relatively safe because they have multiple different triggers on them, stuff like that. So that's what I'm putting in there. Regardless if you agree with it, that's what I'm gonna be using. Anyways, moving on. Next is a Viz pen of some sort, just a single one. I don't need the whole pack because it's gonna weigh me down a little bit. But this is for writing on my map overlays. So if I have my map, then I have my map cases because I don't like soggy maps. This is a way to write stuff down rather than having a notebook on this side, then have my map on this side, and then I'm going back and forth pencil and I can't do it. Just put it on the same map overlay. Hey, distance traveled, where I'm going. Hey, circle this. I got to go around route A, B, your pace method, primary, alternate, contingency, emergency, that kind of stuff. It's really easy to write stuff down just on literally the map overlay all your important stuff, so I'm putting one in there. Now, also, I have a pen and a pencil in this kit, but 
you know, for different reasons. Next is playing cards. Now, some of you probably go, oh, that's just extra weight. But if you've actually been out and kind of lived out of your bag for a long period of time, you have some downtime, depending on your mission. So Met TC, right? Whatever you're doing. Now, if you're going from point A to point D, B as fast as you can because that's what your mission dictates, you're probably not gonna be using this. But if you're held up in a location for 24 or 48 hours because you're unable to move, maybe due to weather, due to you know a hostile force, or maybe an injury or something, sitting there for 48 hours in, in the one spot gets boring if you're not doing anything. Especially my military guys that know you've been sitting in an LPOP for you know several days and you're just like bored out of your mind. This kind of will help. So I'm gonna put these in there, I'm gonna try it out. Recently I've been out and I was just like, hey, I'm just bored, I need something to do. I was done with filming, I was done with doing everything and I'm just kind of sitting there, wish I had something to do. So I went with this. Next is an optional item that I'm just gonna bring along just because I want, just because I think it's an interesting concept and it's a small fire billow, something that just extends out and I can get down into the coals. Now this thing is extremely lightweight. I wouldn't say it's necessary, honestly, if you're really worried about weight, which I am, but this thing is crazy lightweight for what it is and the capabilities, um, very cool. So I'm just gonna be testing it out and I've just always wanted one, just never really pulled the trigger on, I guess, $5 for one of these. But I think it's really cool to get down in those coals and allow oxygen to, you know, pull up. It helps then you getting down on the ground and getting your face full of ashes and all kinds of other stuff. So that's gonna go in there. Next is a dedicated multi-tool. This is a Lever Leatherman Wave Plus. Now this is kind of a heavy tool in general, but it has a lot of capabilities that I can keep in the chest rig of my gear. And mainly that's scissors, I have pliers, I have, you know, of course a knife. So this can in a way replace a knife. And then, you know, small screwdriver and scissors is a big one because scissors are kind of hard to find. Even just having the pliers so you can pick up things like the titanium lid off of your, you know, cup and you put it in the fire and you're just trying like, oh, I just wanna get it off there. You're just gonna grab it with your hand. Okay, I have a glove, titanium gets really hot. Um, fixing gear, like if a pack strap breaks or something, or you're trying to weave molly in. Now I get it, this is heavy, and it may not be for everybody. But I personally think right now that for me, this is a solid tool to put in that can replace several others to bring down the weight. Next is a head net of some kind for mosquitoes because I'm up in the northern general area of the United States, which they will literally carry you off in clouds. So this is just kind of some relief to that. Next one is a very important item that I see overlooked a lot, and that would be photos. Photos of your family members, of you and your kids, your wife, your husband, whoever it is. This allows me to have proof that I am with someone, or if I'm looking for someone. Say I am way out in the mountains and a major event happens and I come back home and my family has evacuated or rerouted or went somewhere else because they were required to. How do I find those people? Hey, have you saw my wife? Well, I don't know who your wife is or I don't know what she looks like, but if you have a bunch of photos that you're able to like, hey, have you saw this person or able to give it to someone and say, if you see someone, please, I'm gonna be over here. Like pictures of my kids, because if I find my kids but not my wife, how do I claim, yep, that's my kid? And they're like, oh, really? Like, that's kind of weird that you're just claiming this random child. Well, to you, it is actually your child, but there's no proof to prove it to them. But if you're like, hey, here's a photo, here's my daughter, here's my son, here's my wife, they're like, oh, wow, that is actually your daughter. So it adds credibility. Also, if you wanna put, put it up on posters and stuff, hey, I'm looking for this individual, this allows you to have that information and to be more believable when you're trying to find a family member or a loved one. Also, I have other documents in here as well, photocopies of my license, my law enforcement credential, my military orders, and then passport in general to prove who you are. Because a lot of times if you go out somewhere, and that's what I kind of tailor this at, is my get home bag or a bug out bag, but if you don't bring your specific documents with you, how do you prove who you actually are? This is a way just to assist that. 
Lastly, I am putting in a sleeping bag liner. So this is a uh, Reactor Extreme C to Summit. This says it'll boost about 25 degrees in your bag. I can't exactly say that that is true. Maybe in certain conditions, if you sleep hot, stuff like that. But this is an extra layer. Now, during the summer months, I take a sleeping bag fully out of my bag and I go to clothing and then a whoopee style of blanket slash poncho, which I'll get into in a little bit in a different video. But this just adds an extra layer, especially when you put a waterproof bivy over this. You pretty much have an improvised sleeping bag for extremely lightweight. Now, I'm always trying to cut down on weight as much as I can. I get it. Some of this stuff is unnecessary in some of your mindsets, but there's always a balance to it. So that is my items that I am going to put into my bag in 2022, which I think maybe y'all should think about having and maybe give you ideas of what to do and what not to do. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, want to see more of it, want to see me using this gear, which pretty much I always film myself using this stuff when I go out and I come back and talk about it. If you want to see future stuff like that, definitely hit like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. And also, if you want to get behind the scenes stuff, there is Patreon. Patreon is available. It's up to you. Literally not forcing you into it. If you want to do it, you get to see behind the scenes stuff and it supports this channel to get more gear, more testing, and you physically see where your money is going to because I'm big about that. I want to show my Patreons, hey, you funded this. This is what I purchased for the channel. This is, I mean, ask the Patreons over there if you ever get over there. I literally show you what I do with my money. So it's not just me taking it and going, ha, yeah. I put it back into this type of channel for y'all to enjoy for your benefit. So after that plug, it's pretty much it. If you want to be Patreon, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. Other than that, I hope y'all have a great day.